We have a eight millimeter socket and we're just taking off both the uh, negative and positive battery terminals. Okay, so next we'll lift the car into the air. It's actually better to do it on the driver's side, but uh, the way that I have everything set up, I'll just do it from here. But uh, I like to lift on the subframe connector, since this car has those. And then just make sure that the jack is also there to help support it. We're gonna add our big three wiring kit. So this is optional. This is if you have more than a 200 amp alternator. Ours is a 240 amp, so definitely meets the criteria. But basically what it's doing uh, is we're gonna run a bigger power wire and we're just gonna follow the same path as the, uh, the regular power wire here. And so we're gonna run a bigger power wire that goes from the battery down to the alternator. Then we're gonna run bigger grounds and the bigger grounds, you're gonna do one that goes uh, from the engine to the chassis and that's down there by the oil filter. I'll show you that. We'll probably end up taking the oil filter off um, in order to get to that better. And then there's another ground that goes from here and it follows all the way uh, down the same path as the alternator wire, but then it attaches um, from here to the chassis. Okay, so then our main uh, ground wire that's all, that's coming off the battery, you follow the harness all the way down here. It kind of branches when it gets to the oil pan. So we're gonna go to the driver's side and uh, you'll see it mounts to the motor mount bolt, which is, there it is. Let's see if I can get an angle, there it is. Okay, so that's where we're going to be putting our main one that comes off the battery. It's going to be motor mount bolt. Once again, that just comes back along here and goes back up to the battery. So I'm under the car right now on the driver's side and I'm looking at the motor mount. And I'm also looking at where the ground attaches. So if you see this bolt here, it's kind of inaccessible. Uh, that's where the f one of the ground wires attaches. So if you follow the motor mount back to where it attaches on the back side, um, it's the same thing, but it's uh, it's back here and it's a lot more accessible. So that's actually where I'm going to run one of my ground wires for my big three kit. So we can leave the other one in place and then I'm going to run the uh, ground wire that goes to the battery. It's going to go from this motor mount here, that bolt, up around the steering column and then back up there towards the negative battery terminal um, on the battery. So I'm going to take a 13 millimeter socket and I'm going to take off this uh, motor mount bolt here and that's where I'm going to do the ground. Okay, so I broke that loose. Now I'm just taking it off. Once again, it's the uh, rear motor mount bolt. It's where we're going to be doing our ground that goes from the battery uh, down to the engine block. Now this is why I bought some 90 degree, 45 degree, and straight attachments here. So this can work out perfect to put this here in the bolt and have the correct angle for the wire to come out. But uh, we're going to clean up this area real well with a wire brush hit it with a uh, connector solution spray that I bought and then uh, make sure that it's all going to be a really good connection. So this bolt that I'm using that goes into uh, the motor mount where we're going to be putting one of our grounds is bigger than the eyelet hole here that we'll be using. So I'll just have to grind that out with a, uh, with a drill. So just get a drill bit that's a little bit bigger and hollow it out if you need to. So as you can see it fits now and you're going to want to hold it with a pair of pliers because these connectors are great conductors so they get real hot real fast so they could really burn you just from the friction of the drill bit onto the actual conductor. 
This is Mechman's Big 3 kit. Comes very well packaged. I was actually really happy to see it like this. Comes with a fuse holder, a 250 amp fuse for my application, then the one or zero gauge, one slash zero uh, gauge wire, and it's gonna give you, a, I believe it was 15 feet of the black and then five feet of the red. So we're gonna be pulling the uh, black cable out and adding our uh, and on it that goes to the engine right now. Okay, so our next step is going to be taking this uh, negative battery terminal and here's our connector that we're going to be adding to it. So what you want to do is kind of measure roughly uh, how big this is as far as how much room it's going to take. Then uh, once you take this area here, we're going to cut that much of this insulation off. Now to do that we just have a uh, box cutter and so we're going to very carefully just cut that same area and uh, just be careful with it. There are other tools that are better for this but uh, this will work if we just very carefully cut the insulation off into a direct circle. So once you've cut all the way around in a circle then you can cut uh, that way and uh, make a nice break in it and then just peel this insulation off. It's a lot easier with this bigger wire than it is when you're dealing with small wire. So as you can see I've just cut the insulation all the way around into a circle. Then we can strip it back to expose the uh, the bare wire. Okay, then uh, give it a nice little twist with your fingers just to help get it back. Uh, so once you have the insulation off and you've uh, twisted the wire here, we're ready to put the end on. We're actually going to take some of this uh, heat shrink tube that's included in the kit and slide it on first. That way once we make our crimp, we can pull this back over and heat it up and it'll make it real nice. And now uh, it'll go over the, the fitting. So you just kind of twist it on as well. A lot of people like to go at an angle like this and then go uh, directly onto it. But as long as all the strands get up in there, that's kind of the main concern. So once you get that, and you can tell that all the wire has made it up into the connector, then we're going to crimp it here. So now with it all on there, as good as possible, there's still a few small strands poking out, but anyway, it's crammed in there real good. I'm going to take these big crimpers that I have, and I'm going to put them over this and crimp it tight. And you want to crimp towards the end first so it pushes the wire forward. Then do your second crimp towards the top. So once again, crimp down here first. That'll smash the wires forward. Then do your second crimp up here. Okay, so the first crimp has been performed down here, now we'll crimp it up top. Okay, so that's probably not the, the prettiest job ever done. But uh, as you can see, it's been crimped in both places and it's a solid uh, connection on there. So now we'll slide this heat shrink tube over it and uh, 
give it a nice clean covering. Just hit it with indirect heat, which what works really well that I have is a heat gun. It's kind of like a hair dryer, but a little more heavy duty. So we're going to put this right where we want it, where it's going to be covering all ends. And just hit it with some heat. So I've just wrapped a, some electrical tape around it to give it just a little bit more of a uh, enclosed uh, seal. So there's our end, and so that's how we'll do each of the ends. Okay, so this end, as I kind of mentioned, is I'm going to be running it uh, more towards the rear of the engine here. It's going to drop down and go to that rear motor mount. And then the rest of the wire will come up to here. So we'll go down there and connect it and run it exactly where it needs to go. And then we'll know how much wire we need to cut off towards the top. So from under the car, here's our end that we just made. And as you can see, it's going to go right here onto the motor mount a bolt right there where we took it off. Uh, however, we're going to first take a wire brush. And we're going to get up in here real well and, and clean that surface so that it's uh, going to make a, a good connection. Okay, now that I've cleaned that up real well, I'll just uh, put our bolt back in with the ground wire attached. Okay, so I really like the way that, that turned out with that 90 degree fitting. We're on that bolt and I've tightened it down real good and as you can see it comes down around uh, the steering column and back up out there. Uh, this is far away from the exhaust, it kind of looks like it's close on the video, but there's actually quite a bit of distance here between it going around here. So uh, now we'll run that back up towards the top and make our connection for the battery terminal. So I'm hoping you can see this, but uh, what I did is I'm running this uh, ground wire back up here and I went uh, underneath right here, if you can see that, I went underneath these lines uh, for the brake master cylinder and uh, I had to take this clip off to squeeze it back down in there. You may not have to do that if you just wire it the right way the first time. But uh, anyway, there's that wire coming up here underneath the uh, brake master cylinder lines. And then it connects back up with the, the rest of the cables here. So with our ground wire coming from the block down there, underneath the brake master cylinder wires and making its way back over here, I'm going to bring it up over the top and just kind of follow the same path. And right where the ground wire normally connects is where I will now cut this wire. So having given myself plenty of extra cable here that'll make it to where this one will connect, I then cut the wire here and we'll take the second leftover cable and go down and make a nice connection. That goes from uh, the block of the engine back over to the frame of the car. For the next ground that's going to go from the frame of the car, which is this area right here, I'm going to pretty much just take off this oil filter in order to get some better access through there. So we'll go ahead and remove the oil filter and we'll lose some oil, but uh, we'll probably just do an oil change when this is all over anyway. So here we are under the car again, and we're going to do our ground wire that goes from the frame of the car back to the engine. So what we're going to do here, you can see right here, this is our bolt that we're going to be going for, for the ground. And there's already this factory wire that we're going to be following. We've removed the oil filter to give us some better access. And then that bolt connects to the block up here. So um, that's the one that we're going to be just adding a bigger ground wire to. We're going to go with our zero gauge wire. It's going to go right in that same exact spot where the other one was. 
So where it mounts to the engine is a 15 millimeter, and where the strap came up and mounted to the frame was a 10 millimeter. So we'll just take both of those off. Okay, so we have our ground wire here that came off of up top. Now we're just pulling it off of this other bolt on the car here. And there it was. So we're probably going to do these same fittings another 90 degree to go straight onto that bolt and then just a flat one to go back up onto uh, right here where we pulled it off. But we're going to clean those surfaces real well right now too. So now I'm just measuring the new ground wire to uh, the connector that it goes onto the engine over here to where it's going to connect to the frame. As you can see, uh, I've cleaned it up real well. And uh, now I'm just going to cut the wire here so that I have enough room for it to connect up to the top there. So that'll connect this uh, ground wire that goes from the frame of the car back over to the engine. So here's what I came up with for the ground that's going from the frame of the car back to the engine. Uh, this one has the 90 degree end on it that's going to go against the motor and then it comes over and it's going to connect back uh, onto the frame here. So I just did the same process. I stripped a little bit of the insulation, put the housing on here, crimped it twice, uh, and then wrapped that in electrical tape, then put the heat shrink over it, heat shrunk it and then put more electrical tape around the end. So that's how I made this, and uh, we still have plenty of wire to spare. The least amount of wire, the better. The longer the wire, the less efficient it is. So um, if you can find ways to attach it to the frame in a shorter distance, then that works as well. Okay, so we're all installed here on this one. You have the 15 millimeter ground that's on the engine. And then we have our cable that comes up over here and connects back to where it used to be. And as you can see, I've cleaned around the area. should have a good connection. I did buy this battery terminal protector as well, and I'm just going to be spraying this on uh, where the cables are connecting to the car, and this will help fight against corrosion. So this is kind of just like a protectant coat, and we're just going to spray it once again where it mounts to the car. So we have the oil filter back in place and that ground wire, that new ground wire that we just put on, connects there, comes over here. It runs pretty close to the oil filter so just make sure that as you're changing the oil and putting it back on that it's not in the way of uh, the oil filter getting on properly. So, Since I did take the oil filter off I just added about almost another quart of oil in there just in case. Once again, I'll probably change the oil soon, but uh, you want to make sure you don't forget about any of the little details like that as you're doing these jobs. So just to show you a difference here, this is the wire that came off of the car as the ground. You can see how small it is compared to this one gauge. And uh, it's really important with uh, electricity that uh, if you're upgrading the power side, you want the ground to also be upgraded the same. You got to think of electricity as a, you know, like a, almost like a river. And if it's smaller on one part than the other, then it's going to overflow and not work right. So you want uh, the same size uh, ground wires to do the power. So now on the power wire, I just dropped it down into the fender to get it close to the, uh, where it connects onto the alternator. And I liked this 45 degree angle one. It looked like it was gonna do the best job uh, for the angle that it would be leaving and going back up to the battery. So I uh, crimped it twice, as you can see. I'm now gonna wrap it in electrical tape and then put some heat shrink on it and then more electrical tape over the heat shrink. So here's the electrical tape, just to give it a nice clean look. I'm gonna take my uh, red heat shrink now, and just kind of put it right about there and then hit it with the heat gun. Get these out of the way. So 
positive side. Okay. There's our power end that's going to go onto the alternator. So now I'm dropping this wire just back down in here to where it can meet up to the bottom of the alternator. Then it'll come up and we'll put in our inline fuse and then connect to the battery. So here's the new power wire as it's coming down and it goes onto the post on the new alternator right here. And uh, this is where we will also hook up our factory one. It'll just go right on top of it. And our factory one's just a little too small, so we'll cut a little notch out of it here so that it will also fit over our new uh, terminal post there. Okay, so now we have our new power wire up top coming down, and then we have our old power wire on there as well. And so we'll just get our uh, little nut and then tighten it all down. So now we're all tightened down with the factory wire and our new big three zero gauge one. So we can put this cover up over it. So now the alternator is connected down here by the power wire. So now with the power wire coming up here, I'll loop it around here and right about here I'm going to cut it and add my inline fuse and then it'll connect to the battery from there. So here's the inline fuse as it comes. This is actually the fuse right here and it connects by these two screws. And so what I've done is I've taken my Allen, it's a uh, four millimeter and I've uh, undone done the screws on the sides and so that's where the cable will then just go in and then we'll tighten it down so this one there is no crimping and that's just how these inline fuses work. So as you can see I inserted that end and then tightened it down now I'm going to be doing the other side of the fuse here and so I've stripped the wire here and I'm just doing the same thing I'm just plugging it into this area here which had a uh, protective plastic piece in it, so make sure you take those out. I'm just going to put it in here and then tighten down this screw on it. So here I've twisted in the other end and I'm just tightening it down with uh, this Allen. So once I get that good and tight, I'll hit it with a socket wrench just to make sure it's good and snug. Okay, so there we are here. It's all tightened down, so we're just going to put our cover over it and snap it into place. So with our line coming up from the alternator with the inline fuse, now all we'll do is add in uh, these attachments here to go back on with the, the power and add one back onto our negative side to go onto the negative terminal. Okay, so we have our power wire coming from the alternator and we'll just attach it in here. There are better kits you can get that uh, allows all these to go into their own connector, but uh, for now this will work. But we'll connect this one here. We're going to connect the uh, negative battery terminal to its one over here. Once again, we just crimp the end like we have been doing. And then from here, just connect your negative and positive terminals.